Greetings out there in YouTube land. This is Morris Man, and as always, I thank you guys for coming to my channel. Today I'm going to do a brief commentary because I just had one of my subscribers ask me to do an overall analysis of Eddie Hazel, guitar player. And as you know, or for those who don't know who Eddie A. Hazel was, Eddie Hazel was a lead guitar player for the Parliament Funkadelics, mainly the Funkadelics. And his, I guess, signature song was Maggot Brain. It was a really kind of mellow song with unbelievable rock solo. You know, that solo has to be up there with one of the top 10 solos or R&B solos. Well, actually, a rock solo in an R&B song. One of the all-time, one of the most all-time favorite guitar solos. And, uh, you know, honestly, I didn't know that much. or don't know that much about Eddie Hayes. Well, I mean, I did listen to him or was turned on to him in the 70s when I was checking out Parliament Funkadelics but really didn't follow his career. And, uh, you know, I did a little research back in the day as far as, you know, who is this guy? And, you know, the question is, why wasn't he as famous, <clears throat> kind of up there with Jimi Hendrix? And uh, a lot of people, and this is just not my personal opinion, this from what I heard growing up, was uh, we already got one black rock guitar player. We don't need another one, you know. So he kind of got put into the clone category. And, uh, you know, it's hard for me to say that's true or that's not true, but, you know, I had somebody say this. Well, actually, I was working with some rappers back in the, might have been the late 80s, and these guys are just teenagers, and I'm, I'm looking at the lyric structure, and it just blew me away. They were putting words in there that I had to pull out the dictionary. I'm like, whoa, what's, I'm like, what does this word mean? You know, that's just how tick or tickling these guys are. And uh, in one of the rap songs, they said this, and I've been saying this ever since I heard that particular statement in their song, and it's true. In order to be <clears throat> successful in most instances, you got to be one of three things. First, best, or different, you know? And I was like, whoa, that makes a lot of sense, pretty deep. And I totally agree. And uh, that's really, I think, the reason why Eddie Hazel, you know, didn't reach the status of hinges because uh, he wasn't first. You know, and during that era, because this is what's interesting and important. He came out with his style around the time Hendrix came out with his. So, again, he got dubbed clone. And uh, what made, I think, Prince so successful, because most of us, especially if we have a musical ear, we can listen to Prince stuff, especially the middle stage in his career. And we can say, Jimi Hendrix, you know, the purple rain, purple haze, the, the ruffled shirt, the playing the guitar like you're stroking your genitalia, all that was Hendrix. I mean, it's just a carbon copy. And I think the reason why Prince kind of got away with it was he came around the second generation, you know. So the, the generation that was digging his vibe was not familiar with Jimmy because they were young kids. They didn't experience Jimmy firsthand. So I think that's why Prince became so successful because, and that's the reason why I believe that Eddie Hazel didn't become so successful because he kind of came out with his style during the same era that Jimmy was doing his thing. So, uh, you know, he kind of got put in that category. He's just trying to be like that other dude. But that's not taken away from his talent because he was a very talented guitar player. And unfortunately, you know, they kind of mirrored each other because, unfortunately, like with Hendrix, who passed away, uh, well, let's just say this, throughout his musical career, it was known that he was doing some serious drugs. I mean, some serious drugs. And same thing with Eddie Hayes, where he was doing some serious drugs, some serious drugs. You know, so or as George Clinton's genius. George Clinton, to me, was not so much the musical uh, masterpiece in the group. I think that was Boosie and Bernie Royale. I think Clinton was the visionary. And what I mean by that is, here's a guy in the late 50s thinking about what's going to be taking place in the late 70s. And he was kind of on the money with that. And it's like, don't too many people have that foresight to say, let me start doing this now because if I start it now, it's going to be real popular down the road as opposed to, let me start something experimental and everybody like, what the hell is this? We don't like this. Keep it moving, you know. So I think that's, you know, what makes George Clinton, in my mind, a musical genius or a genius because he was the, the, the visionary. He was like the Steve Job, you know. Uh, people laugh, but, you know, they get the last laugh down the line because they were right. You know, I think that, uh, I think I was talking about the comparison between the generations, and that's why Eddie Hazel was not <clears throat> really kind of accepted as far as, you know, uh, 
a really great guitar player during that time because of he was kind of some people say he's riding off the coattails of Jimmy, you know. And what made Prince successful again is uh the next generation, you know, uh, you know, they weren't familiar with the original source and when Prince came out with his thing, it's like, whoa, you know. But uh, I'm going to wrap this up. It was something else I was going to mention, but for some, for, uh, unfortunately, it kind of got away from me. Oh, I want to say this. Yeah, this is really important. Uh, again, as far as the visionary of George Clinton, you know, George Clinton was doing something then. That's even in this era now, and, and, and I'm ashamed to say this, but it's the truth, that uh, it's suppressed because, I mean, uh, most people don't want to speak on this, and it's like uh, it's kind of a gray area. They don't want to talk about it, even though they kind of, you know, agree that it's true. But you know, they don't want to talk about it because when you speak on certain things, people think that you are a part of this negativity. And what I mean by that, as far as racism, you know, when you talk about it, uh, people want to question, you know, you know where you at. And uh, and I can say personally, I'm not a racist. I mean, I got a lot of friends outside of my race and uh, I don't judge people just because the pigmentation of their skin because biologically or technically we're the humans we're all the same with the exception of pigmentation and different grades of hair and colors of eyes other than that and sad we're the same thing so it's just unfortunate that we got people that want to hate you based on your pigmentation you know but with that said I'm going to say this <clears throat> here it is 2016 where are the black rock bands and people, when I say that or, or or make that statement, they say this. Well, black guys don't want to rock. They want to make beats and rap and have their head hats tilted sideways and their pants sagging. And that's not true. You know, I know a lot of black guys personally, especially back when I was playing guitar, started playing. They were rocking, rocking hard. But unfortunately, you know, when Prince came onto the scene, because Prince rocks with the best of them, uh, when he toured with the Rolling Stones in the 70s, they threw rocks at him. He's like, get off the stage, Ian, you know. And uh, it's just unfortunate that it's about color. You know, it's about your race, because there are a lot of black bands that out there that want to do the rock thing, but they're not going to get signed because for some reason, uh, that's just still not accepted in this day and time. And here it is, uh, you know, back 20, 30, 40 years ago, Clinton was rocking. Black guys were rocking hard. You know, and it's like, this is what we want to do. We're not going to worry about people trying to uh, put a label on us or suppress us and not listen to our records of band. We're going to do what we want to do. You know, so uh, thank God for Eddie Hazel. You know, thank God for Jimmy. You know, and, uh, you know, the closest thing we had to a quote on black quote, black rock band was living color back in the 90s and it's like okay they're going uh, these this band is going to kick the floor doors open so all these other african-american or black bands will you know come to the forefront and, and say hey we can rock too you know because uh it's just unfortunate in this day and time that there aren't any and it's not because we can or we don't want to it's just that uh it's just still racism in, in, in the world. And I won't just say it's limited to music. It's, you know, it's just, it's broad. So it's unfortunate that it is that way. But, you know, I just thought I would do this video commentary more so, not just, more not, not more so on Eddie Hazel's playing, but just a commentary about him. Because again, uh, I didn't follow his career that much to really kind of give a good analysis of his technical plan. All I know is what I heard, I liked, and it was good. So on that note, I'm going to stand off until next time. Thanks for watching.